On May 24, 2016, Raipur was selected as a smart city. Ever since then, we've had a lot of buzz around this word called smart city. I would like you people to take at least a few seconds off and think about what you think about smart city. What? How do you imagine a smart city to be? How many of you would think that smart city means a greener city? Show of hands. A cleaner city? A city with where people care for each other and no one sleeps hungry? Few but a lot of people think that. And a city where the traffic is very good and people obey all the rules? Okay. So, within us, 50, 60 odd people, we are not able to reach at one straight definition of what smart city means. So, but essentially we will mean, we will know that, we mean that when we talk about Raipur to become a smart city, we really mean that Raipur should not be second to any other city, be it Bombay or Barcelona. We all agree on that. So, one more question which I would like to ask you is, do you think technological interventions and government efforts alone can make a city smart? Do you think so? Those who think yes. Okay. So, good, because... If we say that, because that has been the approach of urban development in our country since so many years. And if we say that, then we are basically ignoring a very important factor in our cities, which is the human element. So, when we are talking about a smart city, we really cannot think about a city being smart without its citizens adopting the smartness, those elements, and then adding those to their own values and ecosystems, and then interacting with those elements in the same way. To give you a reference, Say, we, we want a cleaner city. Say, from the government's side, we put the best of the solid waste management system. But you and I, as citizens, are we ready to take that extra step and make sure that the Lay's or the Kit Kat or Fruity, whatever we have, the wrapper that we have left in our hands, we'll, we'll keep it in our pocket till we get the dust in. Can we take that extra step? That is a question you have to ask. We might have the best of the traffic management systems, we might have the best auto chalaning systems, but as drivers of cars and bikes, are we ready to take the extra step to make sure that we'll be there to, at the red light till the signal actually becomes green, no matter who is honking around us, are we able to do that? We want so many things, so we want the city to be green also, but are we ready to take care of a plant? The government plants a lot of trees every year, but are we ready to take care of even one of them? So basically we want that whatever we are doing from the government's angle, from the municipal corporation side or the smart city side, that has to be complemented, if not equally, if not more than equally at least, by the people's effort, by the people's power. So, the question in front of us as authorities, as government authorities, is that how do we really change the behavior of the people without using the only technique that I know, which is that as the government, we've been trained to use only this. So, but the problem in front of us is, how do we not use this? Why not to use this? Because everyone, all of us who are sitting here would agree that no one wants to be told what to do. As students, we were not happy when our teachers told us to sit quietly. As teenagers, we were not happy when our parents told us not to go out at late at night. So as citizens, we'll never be happy if the government tells, tells me that not to throw litter here and there or anything else. So, how do we actually tackle this problem where we want the city to be smart? For that, we know the people have to be smarter. Smart. For that, we know the people have to change their behaviors, and yet they don't want me to tell them to change their behavior. So, how do we do that? That is the problem. So, and the and the solution that we have through our efforts in Raipur Municipal Corporation and Smart City that we have identified is the people-powered smart city approach. That I'm here to talk about. So, when we say people-powered, so people power essentially has the national e-governance policy defines three ways to actually engage people. We have all these three ways and along with that, the main USP of our strategy is that everyone should feel that Raipur is more Raipur. More in Chhattisgarh means mine. So the reason why we have more Raipur displayed across the city, why people keep wondering hey, kya hai, more Raipur, what is this? So the real reason behind this more Raipur is to make people wonder what is it? What does it mean to you? When I say my Raipur, what does my Raipur mean to you? And that sense of ownership once we create, along with the typical traditional 
methods that the government through its policy has taught us. These are the methods to consultancy, decision making, shared participation. Along with that, when we have this sense of ownership of more RIPO, then we think that our people powered approach of making a smart city is really successful. I'll give you a little more detail because through our efforts, through our work, we have come to define what it, what this people powered smart city approach really means. First, it, it, it includes planning, performing, preserving and participating. Let me tell you about planning bit. It would have happened to a lot of us. We go home, mummy serves us bindi and we, our reaction is ki, ayar, bindi mana di, aaj bindi nahi khana. Aap we, it happens to us. The same mother, if she tells you beforehand, if these are the vegetables we have at home, these are the vegetables you had last time, these are the vegetables we're going to have tomorrow, and this is your schedule and everything. 90% chances, given her wisdom, and the wisdom of all Indian mothers, 90% chances, you will end up saying, Acha, hai, phir bindi achhi hai, bindi bana This is the exact strategy that we use in our government efforts. And this is the exact strategy that made us be successful in one of the biggest projects that we have right now, which is the Jawahar Bazaar. Jawahar Bazaar, as some of you might be aware, is a 100 years plus old market, which is right at the center of the city. The center which is now becoming more and more congested to a point that our newer generation doesn't go there. Because it's too congested, because there's no parking facility, because it's too dirty also because of these environmental factors. Now, there was a demand to redevelop it since the last 20 years. There were 10 plans made. And when I joined, they, all these plans were lying here and there with different problems. The step we took was very simple. We called every shopkeeper together in a single meeting room, 170 shopkeepers were there. No representatives of any sort, straight shopkeepers. We asked them one to one, two questions. First, do you want this project to be done? Everyone was like, yes. Second, if you want it to be done, these are the 10 designs that we, UN Municipal Corporation has in the last 10, 20 years worked on. These are the 10 designs. You take them home. These are the our views on those designs. You can have your own views. You take them home. We'll give you technical experts. You take their help. And at the end of the day, after seven days when you meet, you tell us what you want to do. And believe it, within five hours of this meeting and another five hours of the next meeting after a week, this 20-year-old problem was solved. So that is the power of collective decision-making. And that is the people-powered approach in planning. So once we have a plan that is made by the people who are going to be affected by those plans, first, the plan will be good. Second, they will know why the, what the difficulties in planning are. So they will not just sit in their armchair and blame the government. Routinely, that is a routine practice that we come across. That we make a plan in the best interest somewhere. First, we lack a little bit of understanding. That is one thing which gap can be identified and tackled. Second is, even if we make the best of the plans, even then there is a distrust. So once our intentions are clear, we want them to be on board from the beginning of the project. So Jawahar Bazaar, I'm very proud to say, is one of the biggest market redevelopment project right now, which is being undertaken in the smart city mission. Similarly, when we talk about people, using the people-powered approach in performing, when we're talking about performance, we mean, when we are doing some work from the municipal corporation side, how does the people's power help us? Raipur was a city which had rampant open defecation until a few months back. When we talk about open defecation, I want you to imagine because a lot of you might not be sensitized to that issue to that extent. Just imagine your house, just imagine a friend of yours or a random stranger walks in your house every morning, takes a dump in every in any random corner of the house. You are not allowed to clean that dump, you are only allowed to allow it to decay and you still have to stay in that house. Will you stay in that house? Will you want to stay in that house? So why do you stay in that city? If say, if we might be living in a very posh house, we might be living in three story house, very well interiorly, very well developed, but behind us is a rail line where this whole basti of people goes and defecates in the open. That the same disease comes here. So if we look at the city as a house, then if we are not ready to live in that house, then why are we ready to live in the city? So this is the this is the whole argument which we took to not the people who were defecating in the open. Because understand the dynamics. The city, in the city, there is a lot of class barrier. That is the reality. 
within our city, the maybe the upper and the middle class might not be affected by this per se. They might not be going out in the open. They are pretty rich to have toilets in their houses. But the people who are going out in the open are living next to them and they don't care. So we ask them, because of their act, you are getting affected. So come, come out of your houses. We created a 5 a.m. army. And that army used to get up at the at 5 a.m., go to the places where people defecate in the open and actually stop them and make them aware that this is the thing which government has done for you, you go there. Don't go here, go there, this is the advantage you have. With that single approach, we could make Raipur ODF within the first round. And I would like to point out the story of this passionate lady, Kumari Bai Yadav. She is an old widow. She lives in uh, our Raipo WRS slum area. It is so. Within the first few days, when the five year Marin went there, she was our most vociferous protesters. She actually injured one of us. So, but something happened after two days. She came back to us, very apologetic, and she also took a commitment that I'll now not just I'll help you. I'll help you in a way no one else has. And to just give you a bit, little bit of a background, in railway areas, municipal bodies usually have a problem making individual toilets. It, at least in Raipur, we faced it because railways treated it as encroachment. So the toilets which we made were broken by the railway police. So that was a funny situation which was happening at that point of time. Kumari Bai Yadav, what we did, what she did was she wrapped her house in a sari, as you can see in the photo. She wrapped it in a sari or a tent type of a cloth, and within that. Surrounding, she made that toilet secretly in the 10 days. She learned from our staff how to make a toilet. She secretly made a toilet in 10 days. And she not just made her own toilet, she inspired 100 such people in her own colony to make such toilet. And that whole basti became only within the span of two weeks. So that these are the change agents we are actually talking about. When we are talking about a people-powered smart city, this power is coming from people like her. When we talk about preserving, so, a lot of value addition that we do in, in routine, in terms of projects, in terms of new developments, it needs a lot of maintenance. And that sort of maintenance plus the kind of care that we need to sustain the, our effort, to sustain our environment, can also be done through people's power. I'll just give you one example of a typical thing that we used to do, an approach we used to follow before, and an approach that we have taken right now. Every year, we do Tons of plantations. We, at least from municipal side, we used to do at least 10,000, 15,000 plantations every year. And every other government agency does that. And whoever does that, the next question which people ask every second year is, what happened to those plants which you planted last year? Although we give, make replies, but you, as we are all aware, those replies cannot be pinpointed. What we did last year, what the experiment that we did was to give the plants free of cost to the people and to make them free as to they can plant it anywhere they want. They can plant it in their house, in their office, in, a, in any campus. The only condition was that they have to have an app from which they can geotag the plant. So right now, we have a database of all the 10,000 plants that we distributed last time, where they are planted, who has planted them, and most importantly, who has taken the ownership of adopting that plant. So, when we have that database, now next this year what we'll do is, in the hot season, in this the summer season, when the actual need for water is much more, then we'll go back to those people and we'll ask them to go back to their plants and to water them and click a selfie and maybe we can incentivize them. So we are using technology, we are using people, we are using their sense of adoption as the key pivotal feature in making preserving the plants that we are planting. Fourthly, the most important aspect of the people-powered approach is participation. I guess a lot of you would agree that uh, these days our social interactions have become minimal. We would rather spend hours and hours on our phones, on our laptops, but we would not spend that few seconds to pass a smile when a person is going next to us. So that that loss of social interaction, believe it or not, we see that it is also affecting governance in a large manner. So why not from when we are talking of making a smart city then a, and we are talking about focusing on citizens, then we cannot neglect this particular aspect. 
so we have to increase social interaction of people take them away from compulsive habits to engage them productively and to make sure that their engagement is used in cities so can we solve all these problems in one go that is our approach so that through this method we are trying to do different things in different months so i'll just so one such project that we did was think raipur we have young college students as nit has organized this tech talk young college students are there in all our colleges in raipur and raipur is becoming an educational hub but can we engage not just these students but also the professionals working in different fields of activities and also people who of raipur and who have seen raipur who are living in different parts of the country and abroad can we use their brain can we pick their brain and ask them what you really want and what you really think should be done in raipur to make raipur smart because as you can see within this room of 50 odd people we are not able to agree on one smart city definition so the more the people are involved the more ideas they'll generate so with that perspective we launched this think raipur project it had a fantastic response we had more than 7000 ideas which we got and now just to tell you the tune of seriousness that we attached to it we have put up put against 10 crore rupees just to implement these ideas so that is the kind of importance we are giving to people to people's inputs and to actually to make people involved in the smart city a few days back there was a huge buzz in the city that corporation has done something great when honorable prime minister shri modi ji appreciated one of our initiatives kachra mahotsav in his man ki baat let me tell you kachra mahotsav is also a part of this people powered smart city approach when we started distributing dustbins in raipur so we thought of telling we had to make people aware as to why to segregate their waste into dry and wet waste so we thought how to do it more innovatively so within that frame we, we got this concept of a kachra mahotsav which will be a four day workshop which will be from waste to wealth and it will celebrate the waste that we generate through different activities be it dance music workshops shops whatever so that four day idea was then recognized by honorable prime minister which we are very grateful to him for but it just motivates us that our approach to doing things is being recognized not this particular event or this particular idea but our approach because the way we are redefining our smart city works is important to us we are rethinking the role of the government the role of municipal corporation typically when we join municipal corporation we get the feedback that aapka to kaam hi gali khane ka aap aapko to matlab subah se raat tak gali khana hai why why that why can't we if there is some genuine problem that i will be abused no matter how hard i work then why can't i make people aware of that problem why can't i use people's resources to overcome that problem especially in a city where people are educated where people have more resources and people are more aware so that is our approach we are rethinking the whole paradigm of how the municipal corporation and how the smart city will work so kachra mahotsav was one of those efforts that we took in this field raipur heritage also is something which we are very passionate about raipur as a city has not done any conscious effort to actually synthesize its heritage to identify them to document them and to make them available for public viewing in a very organized fashion so we did that through crowdsourcing we again went to the literature figures we again went to the historians of the raipur city and major priests people who have lived here since it is so we went to them and we asked them what do you think is the heritage of raipur and we got interesting ideas with that we created a heritage walk and rather than making it commercial making it a financial model that some private operator will come and he'll take money for for me to roam around the city and we went for a completely volunteer driven approach we asked people who out of you will actually be interested in getting up on a weekend to show some strangers your city not for any other gain but just because it's your city and you take pride in it and luckily we got 20 such brilliant youngsters who are working with us every weekend they organize the heritage walks they take people around with a lot of passion with a lot of sense of more than so that is something which is happening thirdly we are also creating new spaces keeping this in mind keeping the social interaction framework in mind right now we do not have many spaces where people use use it for common good for common interaction for the city's welfare so 
we create Anand Samaj Library. We recreate it in a way to make it the literary hub so that people from all caste, creed, classes can come there and actually talk about literature, do something about literature, to reinvigorate that their taste in literature. We make making a divide to make sure that people who have the compassionate bent, who have a heart which beats for others, can actually donate their waste or extra clothes there so that someone who needs it more than them can take it. It's a completely free for all concept. We will not even ask your question if you are taking something. So, to, the concept is, it's not the poor who need something. The concept is anyone can need anything at any point of time. So, as a city, we are there for each other. That is compassionate Raipur for us. We have more Raipur clubs in every sort of small or big educational institute. We are going for to make more Raipur clubs to basically engage students with the smart city effort in a productive manner. So if you are a lawyer, if you are studying in HNLU, how can legally, with that legal bent of mind, what do you think can be done? How do you want to help us? If you are a technology student in, in say IIT or NIT, how can you help us in terms of technology solutions? So different colleges, schools, because we want to catch them young, that sense of more riper should be there from the beginning. So we, 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 were, we are very happy when we get the response from the school children that uh, we don't allow anyone to throw litter around us. And we get a lot of reports from parents as well. Our kids scold us for a little. So that, that is the kind of approach, that is the kind of perspective we want our citizens to be. And especially our future citizens. Those who are going to schools right now. So, and everything we are doing is under the banner of more Raipur, more Zimmedari. It's my city, it's my responsibility. And it's working well, so far as I can say. On a concluding note, I would just say, that the next time you guys are taking a selfie with the more Raipur sign at Teddy Banda, before uploading it on any social platform, don't just think of it as a photo. Think of it as a statement. As, as, as if you are making a statement that this is my city, this is more Raipur, my Raipur. And also maybe as a commitment that you will do anything in your power to make it smart. And that commitment, my friends, will be the power behind our people power smart city. Thank you.